What is up, y'all? What is up? Long time no see. It's been a minute since we made a video. I said, you know what? We're going to make a video. we just been doing it without making videos. But we're going to bring y'all one today. And I just wanted, we want to show y'all the whole process. I don't even care how long the video is. We're going to show you the whole process and how, what it takes to set it up. Uh, and, and getting the stencils out, laying them down, fully uncut. You'll have a couple cuts in the videos, but for the most part, you're gonna see it from beginning to end. Uh, I am here myself. Of course, I have Joshua behind the camera. We got my little, uh, my little one, my daughter. There she is. Uh, so we're just here. We're here. Uh, they made a appointment online, and when we came, they. One of the notes said that it's too close to the driveway. You see the driveway here, people pulling in and they're taking out the, <laughs> the curb painting. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna move it over to the right a few feet so people aren't running over it. Now, typically when we do it, we try to line up the, the curb paint with the current address. So we can't do this in this particular location because people are actually running over it. So. Per his request, we're gonna move it over. He wanted a uh, this American flag, one of the worst ones that, that we don't like doing because it's such a small stencil. And nine times out of 10, you got to go back through and do some uh, touch up paint and everything on it. But we're gonna see, what, we're gonna make it do what we do and we're gonna knock it out. We're gonna go ahead and grab, look, <laughs> one of the major things when you do curb paint, obviously, is making sure you get the address right. So you're gonna check the address about 32,000 times just to make sure you got the address right. And then check it one more time before you let it down because the worst thing, last thing you wanna do is repaint something you just put down. So we're gonna look at it. 9546 is a number and we're gonna go in and do that. What we have here, we got, uh, we got a little box here with our stencils and everything and we got some flyers in here as well. Check out the flyers, man. You know, we hand these out. Something real small, they're really cheap. We just drop these on the doors when we out there door knocking or something like that. So 9546 is what we have. I just have it broke down by numbers. So 9546. Nine, 954. Nine, just to show y'all beginning to beginning to end, man. Six. Nine, five, four, six is what we have here. And we got that. So some people like the design in the front of the number. Some people like it in the back. When they don't specify, we typically like to put it in the back. That's just, that's just us. I don't know. Safety first, guys. Safety first. We're going to cone off the area. Just so people know that you're out here working. You know, just a little coned off area. I just cone off where I'm working. Not really necessary, but you know, safety first. Tools of the trade. We got a little metal wire brush. Most people use these to clean out the grills. It's great to clean off the concrete area that you're working on. We got a regular little hand brush. A lot of people use it to clean toilets, but who use it to clean concrete? And we're gonna go in and clean the area off. We're gonna uh, just sweep it, sweep the area off. The reason why you want to sweep it is because when you're outside, the wind start blowing and it's going to start blowing to that dust right back on where you was working. So we try to clean out the area as best as possible. I mean, we're not cleaning the world. We're just kind of trying to clean out the area. And I'm trying to find a piece of concrete that doesn't have little divots in it. Like this one has a little divot in it. And... I'm probably going to move this over a little bit because I'm not trying to paint over the divot. My daughter's getting dust on, on there. Hello there. Yes, ma'am. Oh, you are? Would you do ours? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> so, um... We're 9848 Beachwood, so we're right around the corner. 9848 Beachwood. 9848 Beachwood. Now, how do I know you? Because I could actually give you a call. 
when they wear out. And yeah, or just schedule it, schedule it online. He scheduled his online. Oh, really? I didn't know you could do that. Yeah, oh, that is great. All right, okay. what is the address? So it's 9848 Beachwood Drive. Yeah. Okay. So it's right, so you go around here and you'll see um, ours is, has the orange driveway. Okay. Yeah. And so could you do us a flag like you did? I think you did us a flag last time. Yes, ma'am. That's oh, what we're awesome. doing on here. Oh, perfect. Perfect. All right. Thank you so perfect. much. Perfect. I'll see oh, you in about great. 30 minutes. Oh, yeah. We're going to be going to the grocery store, so okay. we won't be home. That's why I wanted to pay you now. Yeah, oh, this is really good. Yes, ma'am. Because usually I have to wait by chance just to see you. Yeah, you know, so that's how it normally happens. This is better. Can you put U.S. Navy on there? I do have a Navy one. Okay, yes, yeah, that one. Okay. Oh, that's cool. I didn't yeah. think you had that. Okay. Yeah, we're okay. doing a Navy one then. All right. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank All you right, for you your guys. service as well. Uh, oh, take right. care. So what grade are you guys going into? Uh, I'm going to, into sixth grade. Six and four. That's great. So you're going to middle school then? Mm-hmm. Wow. Are you excited? Yeah. Ooh, that's big news. That that's time. big news. When I was working at, uh, for the school district, it was... So as you guys saw, we were, and it normally happens like this, right, Joshua? Mm -hmm. Like, we'll be out, and a lot of people want their curves done, uh, and they'll see you out working, and they'll just stop by, and be like, hey, you doing curves? Exactly what happened, and we're like, yeah, and boom, now you got another one, and then you'll, somebody else will see you, and then you got another one. You think you're gonna be out for only an hour, you end up out three hours, because other people see you, and that's typically how it's done. So, there you have it. Let's go in and knock this out. I'm gonna double check the numbers again. Nine, five, four, six. All right. That was pretty cool. Red, if you get too hot, you know, there's shade, uh, there's shade right there. Or you can kind of turn the shade. All right, so we're gonna finish sweeping this off. We're gonna run the, getting loose rocks off. You don't have to scrape it all up once again. All right. Boom. Just like that. Done. And done. We're gonna get your, we got our blue tape here. So what we like to do, we like to go ahead and lay the numbers out so we can see how long it's gonna be. And it is nine, five, four, six. the flag lay that down and then we take a piece of masking tape boom masking tape we're gonna take these together and this is what Joshua typically does he knocks this out while I'm cleaning the concrete Good two man work. So the guys, the people that saw us doing it, they went there done, and then the guy asked if we had a navy one, and we actually do. It'd be my, it'd be my first time, our uh, first time doing navy. So thank you guys all who served our country. like that it's done so I'm gonna lay a baseline as to where I want to start so you got a couple of divots in this concrete I remember when we first started we used to come out here with measuring tapes and <laughs> 
but we had like design boxes to where we can figure out where how big the box is going to be and now you know once you do it for a while you don't need all that anymore so we're just looking at how long the stencil is you always want to put a little extra room on both sides maybe an extra couple inches so i'm going to go in and finish laying out the box and then we'll come back with the video and show you once the box is all laid out all right so we got everything laid out we got the box laid out now what we use we use our these are this is a yoga mat and we just cut it up and it just lays across the top so you don't get overspray on the sidewalk we were using boxes before and then we found that the yoga mats work a lot better so we just put a nice little, put it on the, on the outside. Once again, it helps with the overspray. Put it on the outside of the tape. There you go, real easy with the overspray. That's done. Handy dandy gloves. Look, I know some of y'all don't mind getting paint on your hands. I don't like having paint on my hands. Joshua, you like having paint on your hands? Mm -mm. Rhea, what about you? No? Yeah, just, yo, know, get you some gloves, man. Stop playing. All right. And the rip. That's okay. That's a couple of tips. All right, paint of choice. We use this Rust-Oleum flat. You can use whatever kind of paint you want. This is just what we use. We haven't used it in a, used this one in a minute. So you just want to make sure you shake it up. I always have a couple of cans of spray paint in each color, black and white, just in case one doesn't work. You don't want to be out at a site and then you only have one can and you stuck. We have two, two uh, cans of each. All right, so I'm just taking a look at the tip. Joshua, I'm gonna have you step up on the concrete so I can test the nozzle. What I'm doing, I just give it a couple of sprays see where the wind is blowing so the wind is blowing that way so I'll have Joshua stand on the other side and film so when I'm spraying it doesn't get on it well, what we do is on the corners we just a couple quick bursts and once you have some down give it another shake we're gonna go over this a few times. But right now we're just laying down a base. You can wear a mask if you want. I'm outside, we outside, so the wind direction has changed, so I need you to get up real. And it's great when it's sunny outside because it dries really fast. You don't want to put on a super thick layer. You can put down a couple of coats. So we spray that down. We're gonna let that dry for, we give it a couple minutes to dry and then we'll come down with the stencil and lay the black down. All right, so the paint has dried enough for us to go ahead and put down the stencil. I'll just pull back my rubber mask. These come in handy so much. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and lay down the stencil here. So what what you see here, I'm gonna show y'all something. So what you see here with this stencil is the flag has a little gap right here on the top and bottom. 
I'm not worried about the sides because I pulled a rubber mat over it, but the top and bottom right here, what I'm gonna do is take another piece of blue tape. This is painting tape. And I am just going to tape off this top area here. I'm not gonna press down too hard. I'm just kind of blocking it off. see it blocked the gap that's what I love about these rubber mats and get when they start getting bad you just get another yoga mat and you're good so these are all covered up I'm gonna go ahead and uh, take my black paint and spray over the stencil um, as you're spraying sometimes you want to press down especially if it's not laying flat that way you don't get a lot of overspray. So I'm gonna spray the stems of the black paint. Uh, we're gonna come back and I will see the results of me spraying, spraying the black paint. You don't wanna do long sprays when you're spraying numbers because you're gonna get paint drip. You wanna hit it with the quick burst, hit it real, real quick burst and get the black paint on there. And you can come back with a second round, but you don't wanna spray it like I did the white. So we're gonna go ahead and do that and we'll come right back. All right guys, so we laid down the black. We're gonna go and pull the rubber mats back. We're gonna take these off. And we will see what we got now. A lot of times you're gonna get an overspray. That's why it's always good to have a nice set of uh, small paintbrushes. Uh, all kind of sizes. And you can touch up paint. That's a great thing with paint like this. You can touch it up, be like brand new. So let's go and peel this back and we'll see what we got. First thing I'm gonna do is take this, take the blue tape that we put down to cover that gap. Then we get the masking tape. To a blind eye that far, it looks good. It looks good from that far. But me seeing it up close, I see there's a bit of overspray. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one of my paintbrushes, probably gonna use a medium sized one. Medium sized paintbrush. And you'll take your white, if you're using white to touch up, you're gonna shake it up and you're just gonna spray it in your top. The little hole on the circle, perfect place to hold some paint. And this is spray paint, it dries kind of fast. So you got a little puddle right there. You just take your paintbrush and you get down and get to it, man. You wanna touch up some of those, some of those oversprayed areas. And the thing about, let me tell y'all about this paint. You wanna start away from the number and then move in closer. Cause if you start close to the number with a bunch of paint on there, it's gonna spill over onto the numbers. So start from the outside and pull the paint in instead of starting close to the number. Trust me, I'm saving y'all a bunch of angriness because if you start close to the number, you, <laughs> you're gonna get paint on that number that you just freshly painted. You're gonna get the wrong color paint on there. So is this necessary? For a lot of people, it's not. A lot of people will just take it for what it is right now. But we feel like if someone paid us to do something and we're not happy with it, why would we leave it for them? You know, and just take their money and move on. I mean, that's that's not good business, right, Joshua? You gotta wanna like it. You gotta be able to act like this at your house and you're okay with it being in front of your house like that. You know what I'm saying? So, treat everybody like their family. So I'm gonna go ahead and touch this up, finish touching this up. 
and uh, show you all the, en the end of it, right? The final result. All right, so we're done. We're done with the touch-up. Always have, we got quick, quick stripper right here for the paintbrush tips. So what we do, we just, I just put it on a paper towel, spray the tip, let it soak in there for a second, and then I just kind of brush it off to clean the tip. That way you don't leave the paint on there and it gets all hard and crusty. And you just run all your, all those, these are cheap paint brushes. I mean, you pay money for it, you might as well make it so. so. All clean. Boom. Put it back in the bag. And we have a, uh, I don't think I brought my trash bag. We always have a little bag. We put trash bags in. But yeah, that is, where's it up at the top to that? Right here. All right, we got the paintbrush done. Lastly, we have, this is a matte finish seal, sealant. So, we spray this on top of it. Once it dries, we spray this on top. And what it will, it'll hold the color longer and it blocks the sun. It has like a UV blocker on there. So this will not affect your paint. You let it dry a little bit and then spray this on top. And just spray it. There you go. Boom, bam, bing. We done. We're gonna pull the tape off, have a final product. Voila. Like magic. It is done.